amazing God and King created mankind and the world all around them perfectly. And he placed us in the garden where we walked with him in fellowship and harmony. But our ancestors believed the lie of the evil one and they bit into it. And when they did, sin entered the world. Death came along with it. And the Bible tells us that death and sin spread to all men, creating separation between man and God and tainting the world that God created so beautifully. But our God looked at our separated, helpless state and loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus. He took on a robe of flesh, dwelt with man, and ultimately died on the cross, paying our sin debt. And then the Bible tells us that he rose from the dead and conquered sin and death, that you and I could walk in relationship with him. And from that point forward, this amazing God invites every single person who has come to know him, who has been made new in him, to join him on his mission to make a difference in a broken world around us. Ephesians 2 connects some of these dots for us. He says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Ephesians reminds us that you and I were made to make a difference. The truth is you probably wouldn't even be watching this if we didn't connect on that level. There is, however, an enemy that creates confusion for difference makers. The lack of clarity. In our world, where there's so many things thrown at us, we can just really get ambiguous. We can lose that clear line of sight that God has for us as it pertains to the purpose that he wants us to walk in. So how do you and I stay focused in a world that is throwing so many distractions at us. Let me take a few moments and share a few true North truths that will help you as a difference maker navigate through the distractions in this life and spend your life maximizing impact. The title of this talk is simply The Difference Maker's Mandate. If you don't mind, just raise your hand wherever you're sitting if you actually own a Bible. The first truth in the Difference Maker's Mandate is a truth that is found in God's Word over 2,000 times. Said simply, it's meet the needs of the hurting. Let me reinforce this thought with three biblical principles and the corresponding scriptures that we draw those principles from. The first is simply, we are blessed to meet the needs of the hurting. Proverbs 22.9 tells us that the generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. In God's economy, we are blessed to be a blessing. We were created to be conduits, not dams. God's goodness to us is supposed to flow through us and serve the poor around us. The second principle is we honor God when we meet the needs of the hurting. This thought is reinforced all throughout scripture, but one of my favorite texts is Proverbs 14, 31. In it, he says, he who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. We like to think when we're kind to a poor person, we're honoring them, but God says he takes it personal. He says when we're kind to the hurting, the needy, the poor, we're honoring God himself. The third principle is that God rewards those who meet the needs of the hurting. Proverbs talks about this as well. In chapter 19, verse 17, he says, He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward him for what he has done. To which I respond, Are you serious? When I'm kind to the poor, I'm kind to the poor. But God says there's something bigger that's happening. 
when we're kind to the poor, it's as if God takes it so personal that he says we're not only being kind to them, we're actually being kind to God. It's like a loan is being taken out and that God will personally reward us. I missed this fundamental truth growing up and I can relate to what Pastor Rick Warren said when he said, I went to Bible college, two seminaries, got a doctorate degree, and I still missed God's heart for the poor. For me, this reality really settled in when I took my first trip to a place in Africa where extreme poverty is very real. I was shown firsthand the reality that over 700 million people still to this day are trying to survive on less than $1.90 a day. I began to see that there was a hole in my gospel, that I had disconnected the truth behind the fact that God does care for the souls of mankind, but Jesus himself desperately wanted us to connect the gospel to his heart for the physical needs of others as well. 1 John 3 reminds us of this very principle. In verse 16 through 18, he says, We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. That's the gospel. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need and shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let us not merely say that we love each other, let us show the truth by our actions. Real love sees need. Real love meets need. We've all heard the saying that hurt people hurt people. Well, in Christ, there's an opposite saying, and it's healed people heal people. So difference makers orient their lives around God's call for us to meet the needs of the hurting, but they also embrace God's call for us to feed the souls of the hungry. Since the fall of mankind, God has been after the redemption of the souls of people. And when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, he invites us to go on mission with him to rescue the lost. This is all throughout scripture, but one of the people that most emulated this pursuit in the New Testament is Paul. Remember Paul? He was running from God. He was actually pushing against the mission of Christ, killing Christians. But then God revealed himself to him. And after he came to faith in Jesus, God showed him how he was supposed to be about taking his mission to the nations, taking the gospel to unreached peoples. In Romans, Paul actually says, Dear brothers and sisters, the longings of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. And in other places, he says the same things about his heart's desire for the Gentiles. Paul modeled for us the call of God for his people to take the gospel to the nations, to feed the souls of the hungry. The truth of the matter is, there's times where I live for this. My wife and I love to carry tracks on us and make sure that we have extra cash so if we meet with a waitress somewhere, we can expose her to the love of Jesus, leave a generous tip, and then leave her with a track that testifies to the gospel of Jesus Christ, or find other ways to share the hope of Jesus. But there's other times where I quite frankly miss this. Not too long ago, I was with some friends up in Alaska, and we were actually on a fishing trip, a 10-hour excursion out on the ocean. Now, the reality is, is the ship captain was not a believer, and it was very clear in the way that he conducted himself. But even though I was on this boat with him for over 10 hours, I got so caught up in the guests and the fishing experience that I missed the fact that Jesus was calling me to fish for him, to be a light for Jesus for him. After coming back from that failed attempt, I was reminded of the truth that I truly am on mission and I need to look at every engagement through the lens of the gospel. What I need and what every difference maker needs is to recalibrate to the truth that saved people save 
people. Now, obviously, you and I cannot truly save someone, but Christ invites us to be a part of that salvation experience. He calls us to testify of the good news and to help people see Jesus clearly and walk them across the line of decision into faith. So difference makers meet the needs of the hurting and feed the souls of the hungry. But the last piece of the difference makers mandate is simply this. We elevate the God of glory. At the end of the day, it's all about him. Colossians tells us that all things were made by Jesus, for Jesus, through Jesus. Revelations reminds us that it all rolls up and ends up in the praise of Jesus. It's all by him, for him, through him, unto him. And he calls us to live our lives bringing glory to the God of the universe. The one who created all things perfect has designed you and I to do good works that bring him glory. And that is what Matthew reminds us of. He says, let your lights so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Paul goes so far as to say that even when we eat or drink, we should do it for the glory of God. And the truth is, you and I will never be satisfied when we live for less than the glory of God himself. That's why I wanna encourage you as a difference maker. Live with purpose that ends in praise. At the end of the day, my friend, you and I were created by an awesome, wonderful, and holy God who loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And he invites us to enter a relationship with him and after we know God through Jesus, we in turn are called by him to move into the world around us, meeting the needs of the hurting, feeding the souls of the hungry, and living for the glory of our great and awesome God. I pray you are encouraged with this Difference Makers mandate.